Hello guys, a beer cut. <laughs> How you all doing? We went from last week looking at um, the basics of electric motors, and this week we're going to look at this. I cobbled together a little controller. It's not the full power, but yeah, it does the trick. It can easily be scaled up. Um, it runs really nice. It's got a lovely torque ramp on it. This is for DC motors. Um, yeah, so I've started building this and I'll take you through it with me. Yeah, it's all about PWM. We're using IGBTs instead of MOSFETs. But to be fair, they're all the same. Well, we, we're using the IR2110 MOSFET or IGBT gate driver. So it can do either. There's no, no change to the circuitry. It's just that these IGBTs I've got are really high voltage, quite high power ones. And I, and I had an abundance of them. So I've just used these. Made a nice little heat sink. Um, these four aren't used yet. That's going to be for the regen break-in next week. But yeah, so far we've got the, the drive going. So yeah, let's go through it. See how I did it. Right then guys, here we have the circuit. We've got our Arduino here. And we've simply got plus 5 volts and ground into our potentiometer. And the output into A0. If you're going to copy... If you're just going to write my sketch in there, just put A0, that's where I plugged it into. Um, pin 9 outputs the PWM into both the inputs. And then over here, imagine over here you've got your big battery pack, which is your drive battery pack. So there's a 200 volt battery pack, for example. That's positive, that's ground of the battery pack. This is ground of the battery pack here. And ground of the battery pack ground of the battery pack it's all it's all connected to ground so the ground so the plus 12 volt and plus 200 volt is is separate but the ground on this on this setup is all the same so imagine this is our drive motor here this resistive load here although it be inductive just just pretend that's our motor we connect that up to plus 12 volts uh, sorry, plus 200 volts and negative through and what, what these um, IGBTs or MOSFETs will do is sync the current down to ground uh, when we want to switch this load on remember transistors, IGBTs um, MOSFETs can only switch on or off and the microprocessor can only switch on or off so the way we're going to do this is with PWM and I'll show you that, it's really simple it's just a, an approximation of half on, one quarter on etc so here's the circuit for the power drive this is this is two MOSFETs or two IGBTs worth each chip can do uh, up to two uh, transistors right now this IR2110 is a great chip this, this one's configured to run too low size to sync current um, but you this is generally used as a half bridge driver so it can do a high side it's got a charge pump built in so it can do a high side MFET and a low side MFET which is really cool but that's probably what we'll be looking at later on when we do three phase drivers um, make sure you've got your bypass capacitors there to keep this VDD at 5 volts exactly and you'll notice I'm feeding the 5 volts in there straight from the Arduino. So straight from this one, straight into there. And 12 volt straight into the DCN. So I'm using the, the 5 volt regulator on the Arduino board to supply the IR2110 with its, with its uh, 5 volts logic input. And it wants a 12 volt supply here. So we're just supplying it with that. At the moment I'm supplying it off a bench top power supply, but... That can be from anywhere. Right, um, and then, yeah, it just drives these chips together. So, basically, the more transistors you have, the more current you're going to share through them. So, let's say, for argument's sake, each of these uh, transistors can handle 50 amps, right? If you want a 200 amp controller, you'd need four of these in parallel. So, that's what I've done here. I, this is only showing you one drive output. I've actually got four set up on my little breadboard, which I'll show you in a second, but I'm only using two of them, and I'll show you that. I'm using four transistors and two 
two of these. The other two are going to be for uh, regenerative breaking next week. So yeah, I think that's it. I'll, I'll show you the board. Cool. Right, here's the IB IGBTs I'm using. The RGH607FBDBQ. Um, 600 volt, they're able to withstand maximum. And 50 amps. So each one's capable of 50 amps. So obviously it's 600 volt, that's quite high power. But we, in reality, an electric vehicle, we'd, we'd be talking 200 volts max for our battery pack. In fact, maybe 250 volts. So, yeah, quite powerful little beasties if you put them in parallel. So with four of these, you can have 200 amps running through them safely. Which is not bad. And with eight of them, you've got 400 amps. Not bad. And I've actually got eight on that little handheld board that I showed you there. So, yeah, so you've got the um, uh, gate on the left, then the collector and emitter. So, collector goes to load, emitter sinks down to, to uh, ground. And I'll show you that now. So, let's have a look what we've got so far. We've got a fully operational drive unit. Um, so, we've got one, two, three, four uh, RGBT MOSFET drivers, IR2110 chips. And here's the where you saw on the outputs, high and low, the 10 ohm resistor and the fast switching and the fast protection diode. That's to stop any transients coming back into the chip from the RGBTs or MOSFETs. So it protects the chip basically. Um, again, I'm not using these two yet. These two are hooked up to these four on the right, which I'm going to use for regenerative braking later. But I haven't done that yet. I've only got around to doing the drive part on the left. So using the four IGBTs on the left here. See, I've put more on this nice little heat sink. Using the four on the left for drive. And the other four are not being used yet. So what I've done, you see I've got all the gates soldered in to the high and low outputs on these left two chips. The outputs are, as you can see, on these diodes and 10 ohm resistors. There's also a 1k resistor uh, to ground and that just ensures a nice switch off. If anything goes wrong they'll switch off. Um, got the, de the bypass capacitor there just to keep on that 5 volt on that 5 volt rail just as it is on the... I've only got one but it's working fine. And that's it really. Then all I've done then is taken uh, the positive rail, which will go to the load, and the negative, the negative rail, which will go to the negative uh, ground of the battery pack. And you see they're all just attached together. Just so pretty much all these, all these transistors are just wired in parallel. So that that's pretty much it. So they all output together on the same cable, and they all sync to ground together. So they all switch on together. So pretty much the current is spread four ways. So if they're 50 amp capable each, that means I've got uh, 200 amps that can go through here. So as you can see, you can just scale it up to suit your needs. And there's our Arduino. You can see we've got the Arduino 5 volt rail there. And our potentiometer is here. So you can see we've got, an, again, plus 5 volt rail down to the pot. And then we've got A0 here. And if you were to check something like this, grab your scope over here. Um, I've got a grounding wire that I can attach into the PCB. So pop that on the common ground. There we go. We'll do some probing. Now let's look at pin 9 on the Arduino. Make sure our Arduino is working. So we're on pin 9. Turn up the part. And there's our increase in PWM. 
up to full power, fully on. Duty cycle is decreasing and fully off. So the way PWM works is you've got a fixed frequency. Sorry about the screen here, yeah, I've got an old school scope. So you've got a fixed frequency. You see this resets the same point every time, but the amount of time it's on to the amount of time it's off dictates, dictates the amount of power that's sent to the motor or light bulb or whatever. So that would be fully off. And then when we have a very small PWM, say 1% duty, you get these little tiny on specs. That obviously is going to run the motor very slowly. And as I ramp up the accelerator, more and more and more and more. That's three quarters throttle. And that's that's full power to the motor. That That is now just sending uh, battery pack voltage to the motor. And that will be about 50%. And that will be slower, 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 stop. That's all it is. It's just... Um, See the frequency is 500 hertz or thereabouts, not very accurate on this one. Um, so 500 times a second that switches on and off. So your ears will pick it up, but yeah, your motor won't, it won't recognise that as on-off spikes. It's too slow to react to that. So, yeah, let's check our circuit. So we, we can see we've got a PWM output here. So, let's put that, plug that back into the chip. And what we want to do now is actually check that our transistors are being driven. So there's transistor one. I'm gonna set a PWM of about 50%. There we go. Now that's gone off the screen now, and the reason for that is because it's being driven at high voltage from those driver chips. That's actually 5 volts per division, 5, 10, so that's about 12 volts that's being driven at now. So there we go, that one's being driven, that's cool, bring you back here. Let's go on to the next one. That one's being driven. Let me bring down there so you can see. And that one. Yep. Got good output to that one. And the last one. Yep. All good. Okay, so that's the drive sorted out. Next week, I'll put a motor on there. But just quickly, just to wrap up this week. As you can see, well, I've got this little setup here. I've got a 12 volt SLA. Uh, blue and brown wire attached to negative and positive. So the negative of the battery pack is over here on the RGBTs, negative rail. And you can see the positive rail goes to the load, just as in the diagram, and then to the back to the battery. Now I'll just can you see the PWM in the background? I'm just gonna ramp that up. And that should supply switching from the battery to the light bulb. It's only a 12 volt battery, but We'll up the voltage next time. This is good for 600 volts. Right, ready? Up we go. You can see some little tiny pings on the top of the oscilloscope now. And there's the element just coming on. See that? And as you can see, as we ramp up the PWM, you get more and more power. More, that's 50%. Ramp it up to 100%. That's bright now. So hopefully that's cleared up PWM. So you can see the higher the duty cycle, the more power you get through to your circuit. So it's an approximation of a, a analog output. It's a digital approximation of an analog output. That's probably the best way to say it. Anyway, um, hope that makes sense. Any questions, just ask. Cheers, guys. See you next week.